Hello, this is Manu Jacob Matthew for Emirati Times. Uh, I'm in conversation with uh, an amazing personality. Uh, of all the discussions that we have about emerging technology and the transformation that AI and emerging technology does in organizations, uh, people tend to focus about the technology part, the blockchain, the Web3, the AI in itself. A lot of discussions happening in the technology part. Where is the human element in it? Uh, it surprises me that nobody touches upon the human element and the human behavior as A gets embedded into our uh, organizations and the organization framework. So here is somebody who is going to talk more about the human behavior approach to A and what happens to human behavior and how it needs to be uh, moderated or how it needs to be controlled or how it needs to be regulated as A takes on our lives, uh, private lives, as well as our, uh, uh, you know, organization, lives in organizations. So, Mr. Sanat, welcome to the show. Uh, straight away, can you uh, brief us a little bit about uh, your career so far? What have you been doing and what, uh, how you've reached uh, uh, this, uh, taken this decision to be the co-founder and uh, managing director of WithinBox.a? Thank you. Thank you, Manu. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, so after 33 years in the corporate world, I was very keen to do something different. Uh, my last role was as the CEO of Infosys Finical, which is one of the global digital banking software platforms. Uh, prior to that, I was a senior partner and global vice president at IBM Consulting. In my 33 years in financial services and technology, I've had the opportunity to engage with banks in all six continents on a variety of software platforms, you know, whether it's core banking, digital banking, cash management, so on and so forth. What's interesting is that in recent times, as technology has got more powerful, as it has raised the curiosity of people about what the technology might do to them, and as regulators and policymakers have become very conscious that powerful technologies like AI need some kind of guardrails and frameworks. Clearly, there was an opportunity to look at uh, the uh, embedding of new technologies from a different angle. So last year, I left my corporate role and along with my co-founder Madhu, we are both based in the UK. We set up a company called WithinTheBox.ai uh, and the byline of the, uh, of the company is look within and think beyond. And the reason we stumbled across this is that, as you know from the usage of the common English language, a lot of people tell you to think out of the box. Absolutely. We felt that as these powerful technologies come in and as they start impacting human behavior, you need to look within because my reaction to technology will be different from your reaction, which will be different from someone else's reaction. So you need to look within and then you look outside. So that was the, the genesis of the name of the firm. Um, we are a UK registered uh, uh, company, we set up last year and very recently, just a few months ago, we have set up a subsidiary here in the UAE where we are speaking right now. Um, it's called Within the Box AI Applied Research Services. We are part of the DIFC, which is a very well known brand by itself in the UAE and we are hoping to do a lot of work here. So I'm sure we'll discuss some of the kind of work that we're doing. But right. our focus, as you rightly said in your introduction, is around the human dimension of the change that's happening. It's not on a particular technology per se. How would you think uh, human minds, human behaviors would respond to uh, the AA and the influx of AA? Nobody talks about that. Everybody talks about what is amazing about the technology part. Nobody talks about the human element. Uh, what, according to you, do you think happens to human behavior as A takes on our lives and our uh, official lives? That's a great, that's a great question. And I think, I think if you look around what's happening around us, because of the narrative that's coming out of the big companies in the US, uh, depending on which camp you are in, either there is a camp which says AI is the answer to all problems, or there's another camp that says that with AGI likely to happen in the next few years, uh, you know, for the first time you'll have a computer that's smarter than the human beings. Now, if you sort of try and cut through the noise that these two narratives have sort of generated, the truth is that today all of us are already in an ecosystem 
where directly or indirectly we are using AI. So when you and I watch Netflix, for example, right, AI is already there in the background. Or when we are on a Facebook, any or LinkedIn, for example, right, there's AI algorithms in the background that's determining what kind of feeds to be sent to us, what kind of ads to be sent to us, or what kind of programs to be recommended, and so on. So we're already part of an ecosystem where AI is being used, whether we like it or not. The second point is that um, with the promise of what AI can help achieve uh, for the world, clearly organizations, policymakers, regulators are all taking great interest in this. Uh, and indeed, I think today it's fair to say that on the back of the digitalization that's happened in the last several years, um, AI has become a boardroom discussion for organizations. Right. And there are many progressive organizations who are trying to see how their business strategy can be driven by AI. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a topic that's here very much around us. I think what's happening is that to come back to your question, like any change, different people will react differently. There are people who are curious about it. There are people who are anxious about it. You know, they wonder whether they'll have a job or not. There are people who are excited about it. And there are people who believe that if you do the right thing at the right time, you can still get the best out of it Absolutely. while being cognizant about the potential downsides of the technology. So I think it's not surprising that there are different reactions. Uh, the, the good part as the way we see it is that today there is an acceptance that as these powerful technologies get embedded, uh, whether it's the management of an organization, whether it's the policymakers or regulators, everyone needs to be cognizant about the human dimension. And I think for the first time, as these technologies have come in, people are beginning to pay particular attention to the human dimension, uh, rather than being excited only by the technology. Okay. Uh, how, how exactly uh, are you going to get involved in the organizations? What is it that you put forward to them? What is it... Uh, what are the changes that you're suggesting the organizations fully understand uh, how uh, human human behavior is going to be changed and the narrative and all that? But what is the solution that within the box uh, is putting on the table for organizations, especially the leaders, to consider? So I'll I'll divide that I'll divide my answer into two parts, uh, Manu. One is what we are doing immediately, and second is what we are going to do from later this year. So we are still a fairly young organization, less than a year old. Uh, and our UAE venture, the one that we set up here with DIFC in Dubai, is just about six months old. So uh, we are still very young. At the moment, what we are doing is two things. In an organization, we believe that understanding the implications of these technologies and its various dimensions needs to start at the very top. Right? Now, whether you call it AI literacy, whether you call it education, there are different words that are being used. But there is enough discussion that's happening in the boardrooms of organizations to understand the technology and to understand the ramifications of the technology. So we've come out of the series of experiential AI literacy programs, uh, uh, which we start at the executive level and we take it down. And our focus there really is to make is at it as real as possible to the role of the individual who's participating in that program. Um, so something that we are launching in Dubai in the middle of uh, June is our first program is actually a, a two-day program called Digital Transformation in the Age of AI. After the summer, from September, we're going to be rolling out uh, several others, I think about five or six other programs. Some of them around the whole focus around investments. There's one around designing for adoption. There's another program around operational resilience in the age of AI. Because as, as companies compete in a more challenging marketplace, there's great pressure for them to be resilient from an operations point of view. So these are programs that we are starting top down. And we've just signed um, what we believe will be a very, very important partnership where the AI campus is part of the DIFC uh, AI Innovation Hub and the AI Academy. The AI campus has just selected within the box as one of their knowledge partners. So all these programs in the UAE are being rolled out as part of the DIFC AI campus. Uh, so with them, we're going to be introducing to all the banks in the UAE and the many fintechs. That's the top-down part around the literacy, around the experiential learning. However, as we know from experience, when the disruption happens in the workplace, 
the disruption largely happens at several layers below. Mm-hmm. Either people are not fully familiar with the nature of change that's happening, mm-hmm. or it's not being communicated to them properly, or because they fear that the negative impact is going to happen at that level rather than the senior level. So there what we are doing is that we are using a variety of practices and methods from the behavioral sciences to uh, look at the behavioral ramifications in use cases where mm-hmm. there's engagement with technology. Now, mm-hmm. even though we call ourselves within the box.ai, our work is not predicated on AI technology alone. Right? It could be any form of technology, whether mm-hmm. it's a legacy technology or mm-hmm. digital technologies, AI, mm-hmm. or two mm-hmm. years from now, there may be something new. So those kind of use cases and the understanding of the behavioral ramifications of these, those pretty much start at mm-hmm. a lower level. That doesn't start at the mm-hmm. board level. That mm-hmm. starts at the lower level. So mm-hmm. we are uh, going to do a variety of use, uh, a variety of use cases with, uh, we've got our first client here in the UAE. Mm-hmm. We've done some of these with a couple of hedge funds in the UK already. So just to summarize, our two existing approaches is top down around AI literacy and experiential mm-hmm. learning and bottom up around the behavioral use cases. This is what we're doing already at the moment. We've mm-hmm. launched it and we already, you know, we've already got several clients. In the next three, four months, uh, let's say by the end of summer, let's say by about September, we're hoping to launch some of our proprietary networks, Mm -hmm. frameworks, sorry, Mm -hmm. which we are building ground up on the basis of either research that's already been done in certain areas Mm -hmm. or in terms of our own understanding of how people will respond to powerful technologies coming into the workplace. So we are hoping to launch a whole host of these frameworks uh, from later this year. That is currently under development. Mm-hmm. I think we'll be announcing the few of, few of them by about August, September. Okay. Um, uh, incidentally, uh, I was listening to a spiritual guru uh, in India. He was saying, let I a, take over and run the world so that we human beings can uh, do larger things capable only for human beings. Let the machines run the world. Is it as simple as that? I mean, it's a, it's a casual question. Uh, it's a philosophical question. Um, do you have any, any, any opinion on that? Let A run the world. Let's do things that's larger than what machines could do. Is there anything simpler that you want to associate I mean, that with? So I don't know in what context that statement was made and therefore it will be wrong on my part to second guess what the implications of that statement are. But I'll, I'll answer that question from, from a, my perspective yeah, of, yeah. Of, of what I think that question was pointing to. See, today, clearly, as these powerful technologies come in, there are going to be activities that only the machine will do. Mm. There are activities that the human is best positioned to continue Absolutely. to do. Absolutely, that's what. And there are going to be activities where human plus machine can do well. Right. Uh, I don't think there is a blueprint today to say that everything is crystal clear into which of these three buckets. So I think what's going to happen is that as the technology matures, as organizations and um, communities get more familiar with the technology, there's going to be a lot of serious introspection about where do you spend your time doing what a human being is best capable of doing, Absolutely. like the question is suggesting. Absolutely, yeah. But equally, what are the activities which are probably best left to a machine? Now, today, for example, on the basis of a lot of the automation that's happened in the past, Many people will point to a finger, point a finger, and say that the machine is best equipped to help in the automation. Hmm. Right? Uh, AI, for example, can do number crunching and data analysis very, very right, quickly, right, right? Right, much right. faster than the human brain. Absolutely. So clearly, there are some activities that are probably best done by a machine, but mm-hmm. equally, there are, are are going to be many activities and tasks which a human being can continue to do. Absolutely. And in fact, I would say that in some ways. The purpose of our firm, of Within the Box, is to say that no matter how powerful these technologies, no matter what kind of use case they're destroyed, they're deployed in, at the end of the day, there's an opportunity to amplify the role of the human being. Oh. Right? There is a narration that comes saying that human beings are going to be overshadowed, machines are going to take over. Yeah. Sure, some activities that may indeed happen, where there's going to be a lot of automation and the human role may change. But when you look at it in totality, our firm belief is that there's immense possibility for the human role to be amplified. And indeed, when you look at what the regulators and policymakers are saying in these early stages, they're talking about human oversight and human augmentation. 
they are not talking about human replacement. Right? right. So, human oversight and human augmentation points to the fact that there is a role for the human being just mm -hmm. as there is a role for the machine. So, I think organizations and communities and people are going to go through this process of finding out where is it that it's best left to the machine, where is it that it's best left to the human being, and what are those instances where human plus machine make a difference. Okay. Uh, so, you're right, there is a philosophical angle to this. Mm -hmm. I think there'll also be a very practical angle to take a objective assessment of what's best left to the machine versus what's best mm -hmm. done by the human being. Mm -hmm. I think there's a period of discovery and maybe mm -hmm. that's why there's some degree of anxiety and nervousness around people. But I'm absolutely positive that the role of the human will get amplified. The role of human will remain very relevant mm -hmm. irrespective of which powerful technology gets embedded. Right. It's, it's quite reassuring to uh, hear somebody from a technology background who's been with technology for a long time throughout his career. It's reassuring to hear somebody talking about the human behavior to emerging technology transformation. Um, just one word, are you uh, uh, alone in this game or are there many people joining voices and doing something about it? Uh, no, I'm sure there are many people around this. So when we started the AI Applied Research Center here in Dubai, I think we were amongst the first companies to focus on this. There are obviously many more companies focused on the technology side. Obviously. But when you talk about the human dimension, I think clearly there is a growing voice around this area. I mean, policymakers and regulators are talking about it. The approach may vary from region to region or policy to policy. But increasingly, there is a growing realization that the human role needs to be understood. And indeed, in organizations today, depending on the use case, depending on the culture, depending on the focus of the organization, I think managements are very, very conscious that they cannot afford to bring in a powerful technology and find that the human role gets completely compromised. All right. So there is, there is, there is growing uh, appreciation of this. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sanat. It was an enlightening talk uh, on the sidelines of FinTech Summit, where lots of people talk about a lot of things in technology, but we have found one person who is talking about humans and how humans are going to be impacted and how they need to be uh, regulated uh, against the, the emerging embedding of technology in their lives. Thank you so much for joining me in this conversation. All the best for your endeavors. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity.